So I was having a relatively heated debate last week with a friend. So what I'm going to do is give you both sides of the argument without telling you which side I was on and let me know in the comments which side you agree with because I'm curious if you're going to side with my friend or with me because depending on what your answer is, in my opinion, your answer will determine whether you're going to make massive progress this year in terms of personal development. So recently I've been hiring. We currently have seven people on the team including video editors, a graphic designer, writers and researchers with two more people joining the team in the next few weeks. The hierarchy is basically me, the manager and then the rest of the team. So what happened was a video was published on one of my YouTube channels and there was about in total about 25 seconds of no sound. So the sound would just mute for 25 seconds within the video because of a video editing error. Now not a big problem, it is what it is, but my question to you is who should take responsibility for that? And let me know in the comments what you think. Should it be the video editor that made the mistake? Should it be the manager who trained the video editor and is reviewing the whole video editing process or should it be me who's at the top of the hierarchy that hired everyone and monitors everything going on in the business or there's a fourth option and that is it's everyone's fault and everyone should take responsibility and you can pause the video here to write in the comments who you think should take responsibility the video editor the manager the owner or everyone now my argument was that everyone should take responsibility it's not about blaming other people it's not about who made that mistake it's about getting the problem solved to make sure that it doesn't happen again, right? Because if everyone makes excuses and blames the person next to them, then the problem doesn't get fixed. So this has kind of been a massive influence in my life over the last eight years or so, because back then I began to self-reflect. I started being brutally honest with myself and asked, why am I not getting good grades at school? Why am I struggling financially? It's really easy to blame the economy or blame the government or blaming other people, right? But it doesn't fix the problem. If you continue blaming everyone else but yourself, then the problem is never really going to go away. You're only able to fix it when you take responsibility and start to make yourself accountable for your own problems. Eventually, and it took me a long time, I started taking extreme ownership for my own actions. That's when I dove headfirst into informal learning and that one decision of actually realizing that I can literally become whoever I want to be, whatever I want to be, by learning every day and building myself up. For example, I wanted to build a YouTube channel, so I read books about YouTube, I listened to podcasts about the algorithm, I learned about how to build an audience and following, and then I went ahead and I did it. And I'm doing the same right now, I'm learning about blockchain, about NFTs, about the metaverse and cryptocurrency because I'm launching a new business project in that area. I really want to get this point across that learning can genuinely be a fun activity. A lot of people associate studying with reading thick textbooks and difficult exams, but it's 2022 and we're in the information age and there's so many fun and interactive ways to learn that that our parents and our parents' parents didn't have the opportunity, but we do, and we should absolutely take advantage of the technology that we have right now. Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video, is just one of the new tools that we have at our disposal. So I've been using Brilliant for maybe three or four weeks now, and by far the single biggest advantage it has over other learning methods is that it's fun and interactive, and I can't stress how important this is. If you want to learn and actually retain the information effectively, you need to be engaged and actively studying rather than passively studying. I've been working my way through the cryptocurrency course. There's 19 interactive quizzes and more than 230 concepts and exercises. So you can see straight away that this is a platform that you learn by doing, not just by reading black and white text from a textbook, for example, or listening to your lecturer talking. So when I'm working through the cryptocurrency course, I'm getting practice with real problem solving that helps process the knowledge and move it from my short-term memory to my long-term memory memory. Every problem comes with a step-by-step -step solution that helps you kind of understand the reasoning for each step. So if you're looking to level up and take ownership of your own life, Brilliant is an amazing place to start. They have a wide range of courses covering math, science and computer science. So if you're studying any of those subjects or if you're just curious about looking into another subject, I really do recommend you check them out. You can join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant. Get started for free at brilliant.org forward slash product The link is in the description and if you click that link the first 200 listeners will receive 20% discount off their annual membership subscription. And Jocko Willing talks quite a lot about extreme ownership. In fact he's written a whole book on it and the book is called Extreme Ownership. Whether he coined that term or not I don't know. And he explains how our ego is the biggest obstacle because we don't want to take the blame for when things go wrong. We want to blame other people. Take ownership of everything in your world. The good and the bad. 
Take ownership of your mistakes. Take ownership of your shortfalls. Take ownership of your problems. And then take ownership of the solutions that will get those problems solved. It's such an important message. It's such a kind of empowering message because if there's something going on in your life, maybe you're not financially where you want to be, or maybe you're not as healthy or fit as you'd like to be, taking extreme ownership really does give you power and lets you take back that control so you can then take massive action in fixing those problems. Now, obviously, there are some things that you actually can't control, right? So some of the things that can genuinely be out of your control is the weather, right? Or other people to some extent, because you can often remove negative people from your life. And circumstances such as when your flight is delayed or cancelled. And some things that you can control. These are really important. Your actions, your attitude, and how you react to situations. As Charles Swindle is quoted as saying, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. If you like this video, I made another video recently on the number one golden rule that transformed my life. I talk more about how I was able to kind of level up my life and give you step-by-step -step guidance on how you can transform your own life. I also made another video on how I absorb information fast, a super important video. And again, brilliant.org plays a huge role in that in terms of being able to process and digest large amounts of information very, very quickly. There's a link in the description below. I really do recommend you check Brilliant out.